document managers. There are so many options these days. Dropbox, SharePoint, Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. Let's find out if you need another one. Welcome, welcome. My name is Josh. I'm the community manager and one of the lead developers here at Moby Diction. And today I'm going to be taking you through the documents feature in Moby Connect. Now, why do you need in the documents manager? Because not only will it be able to store your documents, but it can interact with the other features within Moby Connect and really maximize your productivity. Same as you jumping in and out between an external document manager for the key things you're going to be using within the intranet you're creating yourself, the back end for your application that you're creating. There are several ways that you can utilize the document feature, both from a no code standpoint and from a CMS standpoint. Uh, and where it intersects with users, with forms, with tasks, and many other things that can really optimize your workflow. Anyway, let's just jump straight in and I'll take you through the best sort of things to get you set up and exactly what the documents feature can do for you. Okay, here we are back in Moby Connect. And um, we're gonna use an existing project that we've used before, my very cleverly named JL1. And in here, uh, you'll see we've already got our menu set up uh, with a couple of things that we're gonna need. So user management and company docs uh, will pretty much be all we need. There is a user docs as well that can be added to the menu in the same way we've done it before. Just going up the top here, settings, and then over to edit menu and features there we go and a quick little plus there we go there we'll just line up with that save bang and bang and then you'll see now it's in our side menu as well and the difference between company docs and user docs is as it sounds company docs are available to your company your organization your business whatever you want to call it and of course can be renamed here in the menu uh, user docs is to the individual user so if they have documents for themselves they can be update they can be uploaded in their individual users it's a sort of siloed as an individual user let's start with company docs um, to understand what's available here at the very basic level much like you'd be used to with your standard document managers you've got uh, different views a gallery view, folder view, list view, just a different way of viewing your stuff, uh, a refresh toggle. Um, this basically will allow you to refresh the document window just in case something's out of sync. Rarely happens, but it's nice to have an option to do it. You can create a folder, create an item. An item is a, a small play on how you can store documents, a document manager, and then of course show a filters bar. Pretty stand straightforward and then hide filters bar. Obviously nothing in here yet. So let's start with create a folder and we'll just call this pictures. Uh, now you've got it here. Obviously it adds this little uh, folder icon. If you wanted to jazz up your company docs uh, for you know, visual sake, you can add a, an image and I'll just grab, I'll just add a little image of a MacBook there. That looks jazzy. So if you were creating a, a library of folders that contained things that needed a bit more of a visual point, you can obviously add the photos there. If you couldn't care less about photos, you can ignore them um, or you can just view it in folder view, which will just show you a much more simpler UI. Now you'll see some icons down the bottom here. Now this is to tell you what the thing is. So obviously this is a folder. And if I was to add a, another uh, file to this for example so if I just grab this file of the Hubber bridge and add that there and I just did that by dragging and dropping that into the window that'll add it to the current folder view uh, so obviously at this point we're at the master folder view and we can go into this pictures folder and we're now at the second rung second level let's call it and um, we'll go back there you can see here that this is a file instead of a folder so that's how you can sort of tell the differences between them. You'll see these icons down the bottom here and they are buttons. So you've got favorite, share, edit, duplicate, and of course, delete, noted by the trash can. Uh, to favorite, pretty self-explanatory. You favorite something, there we go, boom. It'll show up as your on your favorite folders on the left-hand side. So if you end up having a hundred folders in here, you can obviously isolate them very quickly and access them very quickly. Uh, you can also isolate all your favorites if you've got a really long list here, for example, by just selecting the favorites there, and that will obviously get rid of everything else. So let's go home here. Uh, next to it, share. Again, pretty self-explanatory. 
and we have no users apart from ourselves, obviously currently in the platform so at this point i'm gonna take us out of docs and we're gonna have a look at users so you'll see here we've got ourself josh lawson we are the owner of this platform but we're the only person here and it will make you know, obviously make us very lonely so let's go and invite a user and i'm just gonna use my standard email here and i'm just gonna say plus 700 See, they've done this a fair few times. And at this level, you can see admin and user. Uh, now they're the two, there's three different levels, owner of course being one of them. The uh, two you can add. So you can add another admin that has the same rights as you, except for billing. You'll always retain those rights. Or of course a user, which won't get any of the settings on your project or be able to manage any of those settings, I should say. And will just get access to the um, features that you add to their menu. So let's say we want to add a user, we'll add that, there we go, and they have been added. So you see they're missing a first and last name there, and that's because it's up to them to add it on their end, uh, just to simplify that process. Uh, and you'll see their invite is pending, and I'm just going to do a little bit of movie magic here and skip ahead. Boom. So with the powers of movie magic, I've skipped ahead to pretending your user has received an email and gone and set up their account. So we've got James Bond here, very subtle naming convention, I know, um, but he's going to act as our user example in this project. So we're going to go jump straight back into Company Ox, and if we click on the share icon again, you'll see James Bond is there and we can share the folder with him. And you'll see we've shared the folder with him. There we go. So that will show up in their user documents. So the reason we set up a user um, in we, sorry, the reason we set them up as a user is to basically I, highlight the fact that when we set up the user menu, we're not going to give them access to company docs. We're only giving them access to their user docs. So when we share a company doc with, uh, with a company folder, for example, with a user, it will show up in their user documentation. And I, uh, what I'll do to show you that is if I just go settings edit menu and we edit for our users you'll see it is blank so we'll just give them access to our user docs here save that user docs and there you go you'll see I'm logged in as the user and in my user docs I've got that pictures there but I have no edit options I can only view I can't update anything to do with it because of course I'm just a user, not an admin. Anyway, I digress. Let's go back to our company docs as our owner and we'll see what else we have in here. So let's go into our pitches folder here and we can create something at the second level, for example. And we're gonna create an item. Now, I mentioned before that an item is different to just a standard way of uploading a file by just dragging and dropping it into the uh, document window. Now, how it's different is that gives you an opportunity to manage multiple versions of the same document. So with a lot of our Mobi Connect users, we notice they might have a form that has a hard copy version. That hard copy version might be a Word document. It might also be a PDF uh, and maybe even an Excel, et cetera, et cetera. In, in this document item mode, what you basically can do is you can call this the very inventive uh, form one. Uh, we won't worry about tags. Now the code could be your internal document reference. So for example, if you have uh, a way of numbering your files uh, in a unique way, you can punch that in there. It is an optional field, so you don't have to worry about it, but you could say that this is, you know, version 1.2 of the doc. Uh, little v just looks better and then you can also add an image like you can to a um, folder in that way of like making it all look pretty don't have to and then you go to this next phase here and you can attach a form so you'll see uh, I've got two forms that I've created in this project before from other videos so we'll attach our work in progress form and we'll say our work in progress form also has a word version and it has a Excel version as well so I'll attach my uh, Word document version. As you'll see, it shows up with a big Word symbol there. And there we go. 
So we've got our Word and we've got our Excel copy of that. We could also add a PDF uh, or you know a PNG, a JPEG, etc. Um, and then when we save that, so here you see we've got our form one, which is our document item, and inside that you've got version 1.2, you've got our Excel version, our Word version, and the online form that would have been created in the form builder. That's another way of making it very easy to have those three versions of, relatively speaking, the same document in one item rather than having them separate in one folder. And this allows you to manage it with a code in a just more simple UI for your users. Now, and as a user, if I go back in to the pictures here, uh, from my user perspective, I can see the same files have been added there. So if you extrapolate this out and you say, I share it with employee one, three, and five, and I share that folder with them, anything I add to that folder, they will be able to see in their own documents. So it makes it very easy for you to provide them with, uh, you know, forms they need to complete or uh, just reference material they need to rely on all the time in uh, the one easy place that can be updated constantly uh, within Moby Connect here. Now, the only other things I'd point out in relation to documents here is you'll see there's a storage meter here up in the top right. This will basically just tell you if you're at a cap of storage for your particular plan. Obviously, we've got a different pricing plans, but uh, you can read about that on our website. Um, but yeah, just make, make sure you obviously don't go over that. That's pretty stock standard. And let me show you how this sort of works in tasks. So here we haven't had any tasks. We've touched on tasks before with forms and this works in a very similar way. So we've got our two users here. We've got ourself and James Bond. And we'll say uh, complete this document. And it's pretty much almost in exactly the same way we've done this with forms before. We're gonna say document. I'm gonna say we want you to complete this on tomorrow. Uh, and we'll say complete this doc and you want to select the attachment there and then just add that and there we go we've got our harbor bridge uh image that we uploaded earlier uh, even though it's not something you necessarily complete but for example's sake you get my point publish that and away you go this is now uh, applied to our user james bonds and it's to complete the photo of the harbor bridge <laughs> for the developers watching uh, if you're and if you're curious, I wanted to just do something a little bit different and show you how it can be used from an API perspective. If you're not a developer, click on the link in the video that should be appearing now, and you can skip ahead uh, to the end of the video. So, if you're not just using Mobile Connect for its lovely internal UI and you want to have a deeper integration with documents in this instance i just wanted to do, go over it quickly uh how the apis uh structured how the apis worked with the folders and uh, items that we just created so to set up the api we've got our api documentation on the website on developer.mobydiction.com uh, so for your authorization you're going to need two things you're going to need your project id and a bearer token you can get both of those from using the login on authentication apis which will also be in the api documentation in the link in the description uh, but to show you here so we've got our bearer token already set up and in our headers we're sending uh the bearer token and our project id if you don't send the project id you will get a 404 403 403 uh as the response so here we're going to get uh all projects uh, get all folders by project if we send that you'll see in the response we've got uh, a json object with uh pictures which is the folder we created uh just previously and you'll see obviously some more behind the scenes details here you've got uh you know ids and created on created by all of that fun stuff and uh, the folder image we added which is stored within the s3 bucket and you can see that it also is uh favorited by uh me <laughs> okay 
So uh, the one thing you can want to probably want from here, if you're say looking up the uh, document item we created before, because we created it within the pictures folder, uh, and say you wanted to display that on your front end, for example, for whatever reason, um, you'd need the ID of the folder in question. So we're going to grab the 982151. We're going to go over to our uh, item get by folder, which is the parent. Uh, we've obviously got our authentication set up here, but in the param section, instead of 66, we'll put our that in and we'll send that out. And there you go. You'll see we've got all the children of that, that are children of that folder. Uh, so we get a bit tongue tied there. Here you go. Form one. And you've got its ID, uh, the folder ID, so that it's what its parent is, the project ID, obviously we know what that is, and uh, our little uh, version 1.2 there. The form ID um, that we attach to that document item as well. And of course, the uh, next couple of things we want are the documents that we attach to it. So we'll grab the ID of our item, and then we'll go to our get uh, document files attached to a document item. And then you can put in the ID there. And then you'll see the two files that we attached to the item, which was my Excel and my Word document. And there you have it. That's how you can use documents within Moby Connect and making them interact with a few of the different features that we have. And also from a developer perspective, just a very brief overview of how the structure works. Folders with items in folders and uh, some files within items, etc. Obviously from a developer standpoint, there is a lot more you can do with that. And if you check out our developer docs online, you can delve into that deeper. That's all from me. I hope you had fun. I know I did. And I will see you next time.